What's up, people? Sorry, I was gonna do this video yesterday, but something came up but today. Well, I got a little bit of time. I am gonna be, we're gonna pretty much finish off our Mummy franchise review. And then the plans for this week are, I can at least say a few of them. I don't know if I, I don't have fully planned out yet, but Anaconda, I'm probably gonna review Anaconda this week. As since, you know, since I did Deep Blue Sea last week, we'll just keep the theme going for creature features. So I'll do um, Anaconda maybe tomorrow or Tuesday. And then we'll do that X-Men pitch. We're definitely going to do a fixing. I just got to figure out which movie. But we're going to do a fixing. And then um, I'll figure out a franchise to review. But yeah. So that's my plan. I might do a Halloween Kills kind of update. Because there's an update to do with Halloween End. So I might talk about that. And uh, I might make a rant video about what's going on with He-Man. And it's not going to be to talk about He-Man because I'm going to be up front. Besides the 2002 series, which I kind of grew up with, I didn't really watch. Like, I never watched the original, minus some clips. So I'm not going to go in. I, it's more about because, you know, I, as a former Star Wars fan and just seeing a lot of these franchises get destroyed and stuff, I do feel like I know how it feels, so I'm going to make a video just going in on Kevin Smith. And that's more what it's going to be about. So, but now, to my review. We are here to review The Mummy 3, or The Tomb of the Dragon Emperor. It came out in 2008. I remember being so hyped, because at that point, you know, there was only the two Mummy movies, and then you had the Scorpion King. And then, for, I don't know why it took so long for this film to be made. Because Mummy Returns was 2001. Like, cause that, I'm like, why it took so long to get made? Almost seven years. And I get it. They had to change the location. Because, you know, we did Egypt twice. And you had Jet Li. But then the, 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 re, the movie falls off at A. They couldn't get... Um, Rachel Wise to come back. I don't know if it was... I've heard multiple reasons why. But I heard somebody say actually a really good suggestion. You know how my video I said, like, they should have just killed her off screen? You, you could have even just got her in. They said, like, you could have just got her in in, like, the last five minutes or something. That could have worked, I think. Or the other... This movie has other issues. I think they wasted Jet Li, because, I mean, as you saw in my Lethal Weapon review, Lethal Weapon 4 review, Jet Li could play a good bad guy, and then in this, he's just generic. You don't see him enough as a mummy. He's like a stone guy for all of, like, ten minutes. And then he becomes fucking human. And then you have Michelle Yeoh and him, who are two... Michelle Yeoh from Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon... Two great martial artists. No, you don't even give them a good fight. You have, like, a fight that lasts five minutes. And it just... And I get it. You wanted to give the O'Connells the cat. You could have still did it, but... You have two great martial artists. Take advantage of that. You know what I mean? Like, take advantage of that. I don't know why they just didn't do it. It, it made no sense. Um. So... I guess I'll take a hit and we'll get started on the movie. I'll, I'll say this. <coughs> the CGI isn't horrible. <coughs> and the other positive is you got some decent shots, but besides that, <coughs> and like the action is all right largely like the big the big action the big action in the movie so is decent so i think that's like my few positives but so this movie starts off we're in ancient china we're introduced to um jet li who's the dragon emperor he destroys the great wall of china this is where he has this um she plays like like a sorceress. Um, uh, her uh, fuck, I don't even remember her name. Shell Yo's character, Zion. Okay, who's she's a sorceress who used to work for um, 
I'm just gonna call him the Dragon Emperor. And she fell in love with one of the troopers, like his tr soldiers, and he executed the guy for it. It's pretty brutal, actually. They, like, ripped his arms off. Like, they did that, like, multiple people on horses, and you're... Yeah, it... The thing is, that was cool. Like, I think the beginning wasn't too bad. But then she puts, like, a curse on him before he's about to kill her. That turns them all into stone. And... So... Yeah. Oh, they turned into clay, not stone. So they turned into clay. And then now, time jump. We're in the 40s now. Alex, who's, you know, Alex O'Connell, who, big issue, another issue, his voice, his British accent's just gone now, now he has a big, I get it, maybe they felt like, okay, we gotta make him, like, if he's gonna be grown, we gotta make him, like, Rick, so we gotta, but you didn't need to give him an American accent, you could've still had him, you know, have his dad's qualities, but still be British, it just was a continuity, if you're gonna make him American, should've been American in the first, it's just continuity, I, I get it. They could justify it, whatever. It's not the biggest issue, especially considering this whole movie. It's not even the biggest issue of the movie. So, he's a, um, he's an, into archaeology like his mom was, and we meet Professor Wilson. They find the tomb. They get attacked by a, a, a mystery woman who, it's all, you could tell they did this to, like, almost be, like, a callback to, uh, Art F. Bay, you know, who started off as, like, an antagonist, not an antagonist, but they may, they want to make you think he's, like, a bad guy. But it turns out he's there to stop and prevent Imhotep. But, so they did the same thing here. The woman is, which I'll just spoil it, she's Michelle Yeoh's daughter, who they eventually become, she's, like, the love interest for Alex. I think that stuff's actually not too bad. So, but, um... They end up successfully getting it. Then the O'Connells, um, this is where Evelyn, yeah, Evie's a writer now. And like I said, Evie should not have been in this movie. I think at all they could have did something where, they've done that before in other movies where the character's still alive, but they just don't show them. They could have just did that. Like, because uh, Ev it's not, uh, especially two films in, we know we're so used to Rachel Wise, and it's like, eh. like the reason I said kill her off is you could keep Maria Bella in and just have her play a new character. It just she was not easy. It just felt weird. It almost stunts her growth. Like you know, you have she had that growth in those first two movies, and then this she's just they don't evolve her character. She's just there. They just did it all so we could have Evie in the movie, but it's like they could have just not had her in it. Get a, did my idea kill her off screen or even just have her in the like see if you could convince Rachel Wise to come back for like maybe the last five minutes when Rick and you know Alex get back from the from like beating the bad guy they could have like yeah a quick scene like oh where were you and then film it you could do something like that I think there's I don't know so they get the O'Connells to agree to come back so they can take the eye back to China. And this is where it turns out Wilson's a bad guy. He's working for this rogue faction led by General. They want to bring back the Emperor, the Dragon Emperor. So then we have like a battle. So yeah, Wilson gets killed. You have basically a big chase um and i think the yeah uh they resurrect the emperor and yeah he's a stone guy he had like a big chase sequence and then um they meet up with jonathan and they go to the himalayas so they can find the path to shit this movie is very convoluted too like especially when we get to this middle portion where they gotta try to get the Shangri into Shangri La, um, and you have this big battle sequence again. Then uh, Emperor finds them. Big battle. Rick gets hurt. Basically, his son's about to get stabbed, but 
it turns out he pushes Alex and then he gets stabbed. But he had Lynn, who's the girl, and you, this, I think by this point, her and Alex are starting to have a little bit of a relationship. And I'll admit, it, it's not too bad. Like, I, if you don't call this movie The Mummy, it can, I guess it could be like a dumb B movie, I guess, that could be inspired by The Mummy, but it's not The Mummy. It doesn't feel like a third continuation of the story. It feels like almost its own thing, just Rick happens to be there. He's like the only real thing from those movies there, because Jonathan's, and Jonathan's, so okay, Rick and Jonathan. They didn't even try, I don't know why they didn't try to get Oded Bay back. Oded Fair, sorry, I got his name mixed up again. They, I don't know why they didn't try to get Oded Fair back. He was still doing movies and stuff. I don't know why they didn't try to get him back. It's, it, that was the, this, it, it just doesn't feel like the part of the Mummy movies. It just feels like, oh, we have Rick and Jonathan, but we'll just put them in this ancient China movie. It's just, eh. And then that's the other thing. He becomes, like, the, the Emperor becomes human very quickly. We don't, and also, they don't go into the lore. And that's the one thing that first Mummy really did. I think even the second, I think the second one did it, too, pretty decently. Where you have a little bit of lore. Because, you know, they're archaeologists. There should be some kind of lore mentioned. I don't really think they do it enough. They, there's this, like, surface level, of this happened. But it's very surface level. No, like, oh, we're going to go into the history. And that's what these movies should be about. You know, we're learning about ancient history. You know, like those first two mummy movies, you were learning about ancient Egypt. Even a little bit of the Scorpion King, you were learning about ancient, like, that east before, like, the pyramids. This just, you don't really learn a lot about ancient China. And ancient China is interesting if you look into it. You know, and it's just... They barely go into it. So, Lynn takes them, and this is where it turns out uh, Lynn is the daughter of Z, who, and she she still lives, and and it, they're both immortal. So they heal Rick, and then oh yeah, there's a part where fucking Yeti show up. That was weird. I, that was too on the nose. I get it. They were in the Himalayas, but why are there Yetis here? I'll admit, that's like probably the worst CGI of the film is Yetis. And this is 2008. There's no excuse for bad CGI. I don't think all of the CGI is horrible. Like, the main battle's okay looking in the end. But, like, yeah, a lot of the creature designs... I'll admit, yeah, like, the creature designs weren't great. Like, some points when um, the Emperor is... Uh, Dragon Emperor, because the Emperor is Star Wars... The Dragon Emperor, when he's in clay mode, there are some spots he looks pretty iffy. It's like, this is 2008, guys. Dark Knight, Iron Man. Like, Dark Knight, I know, is not a CGI-heavy movie, but still. Iron Man 1. Oh, okay, I'll, I'll just name those two. Iron Man 1, yeah. Incredible Hulk. And, come on, and this is the third Mummy movie. You should have a decent budget by this point. I don't know. But... The Yetis were pointless. That was just, just a random add-on. Let's put Yetis in here. Uh, if, if, like I said, if it wasn't a mummy movie, this could maybe be entertaining. But Yetis, that just was weird. I'm like, what am I watching? Even when I first watched it, I was 12 years old when it came out. Because 2008, that was like a shitload of movies. Like I mentioned, Dark Knight, Iron Man 1, Incredible Hulk, even Hancock. Like He had like a bunch of shit bunch of movies that year and then this is now was so hyped and then uh, i was even as a kid i was really disappointed with this <laughs> then we get i'm just gonna kind of do a time jump we have the big battle in the end the Ocon z and the emperor have a fight and i think the emperor ends up dragon emperor ends up beating her and then the o'connells have to face him off and then they defeat the Emperor by uh, stabbing him with the dagger, and then they vanquish him, and then, then yeah, movie. Yeah, fuck this movie. I don't, and the other thing is they, they should have did a lot more with, they, surface level, had like, oh, Rick and Alex have a bit of issues, but it's very, like I once again mentioned, surface level. They don't really go into it. I 
they could have did more. That's why I said they should have killed Evie. I think, as much as I don't like off fucking screen dads, I think you that could have been the catalyst to build up their arc. And it just, there's none of that here. It's, uh, Rick was cool. It was cool seeing Brendan Fraser, you know, because I think this was one of his, oh, no, I think he did a few movies after this. I forgot. He did, like, I think he did the first Journey to the Senate of the Earth the same year. This is a way better movie. In my opinion, it's almost like a different universe, Mummy 3. And then, um, it was cool. Jonathan was cool in this. He was like one of... Rick and Jonathan are the only positive. They don't do a lot with the Dragon Emperor. They don't go into his lore. He's just... He's the mummy bad guy. He's not even a mummy. He barely was like a clay guy for like two minutes. And then, even in his human form, he didn't feel that intimidating. It was... He was generic, especially, like, after watching him in Lethal Weapon 4, which, that's a Lethal Weapon movie. He, they make him a much more intimidating bad guy in that. Like, there's no moment I felt, like, intimidated. Like, Imhotep, especially in the first one, he had that, Im, that imitation, that, Im, you know, um, he was, you know, fucking scary. Very in, intimidating. I don't get that intimidation factor from fucking Jet Li in this movie. He just feels like warrior guy. And then even as a warrior, you don't feel that intimidation. You have, like, I'm going to mention this again. You have Michelle Yeoh from Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon. And you, of course, have Jet Li. Let's not have him have a cool sword fight. It was like five, six minutes, and then he killed her. <laughs> that was it. Like, come on, man. It just... I did not like this movie. Evie doesn't feel useful at all. Like, she just... There's no evolving from her. Even John... Even Rick's character. There's no really... No evolve... If these, neither one of those characters evolve in this movie. They, like... That's what you're supposed to do in each, like... Whenever you have characters who are carryovers from a, a previous two movies or whatever. Especially by the third one. There should be some kind of arc. I don't... There was none of that in this. They just kind of... We're, oh, here's <coughs> Rick and Evie. The Mummy series that they did, it was, I don't know if a lot of people remember. I'll admit, some of the anime, like, they made Imhotep fucking purple. And I, they did that because it was a kid's show, so they can't just have him be, they didn't want him to just be dead. So they had him, so they made him, like, purple for some reason. But minus, the, like, a lot of the weird, like, color changes, like, they make Evie's hair red for some reason. Besides those rare changes, that show kind of works as a Mummy 3. This doesn't. It it just doesn't work. The music isn't that great. The action scenes are alright, all I guess. But yeah, this movie is not good. Out of 10, 4, four or 5, like, honestly. I would say don't watch this. Just watch the first two and then even the Scorpion King. Just watch those. And it'd be done. You don't... It's unfortunate, too, because I was so hyped for a Mummy 3, and then they just... I don't know what the issue was. Like, they took so long to make this movie. But... Mummy 3 was disappointing. So... But other than that, um... Tomorrow, I'm probably gonna... Oh, I might do a fixing tomorrow, or we'll do the, um... Anaconda review be one of the two. And then I got other videos planned this week. And then, um... Actually, you know what? I might make the fuck Kevin Smith video tomorrow. I'll probably just do it tomorrow. Fuck it. Since it's recent and it's going on right now. But other than that... Fuck Disney. <coughs> Fuck bitch ass James Mangold. Fuck bitch ass La Bitch James. And now, fuck Kevin Smith and fuck Clerks 3. Dude's a lie piece of shit. But I go on go in on him tomorrow. Talk to y'all later. Mummy 3 sucks. Peace. <laughs>